That changed my life, that riff. You know. As Beavis and Butthead would say, dad and dad. When I was learning guitar, uh, my friends and I, including John Myung, the bass player in Dream Theater, uh, we uh, really loved Iron Maiden and Rush. So we like knew every Iron Maiden and Rush song. Um, when uh, Number of the Beast was a big one, I mean, we literally learned all those songs. So that was one of the riffs we loved playing together, was from uh, Number of the Beast. <laughs> I didn't realize how big of a signature um, vibrato was uh, for guitar players. And I learned how to do it by slowing down records. I mean, I remember listening to an Iron Maiden record and hearing this really slow. But when you played at normal speed. And so I made the... Uh, you know, realization that vibrato was just a series of bends up, up and down, and that was a big moment for me, and it made all of my soloing become, become uh, more believable, and it also helped me develop my own sound as a guitar player. Is there a, uh, is there a particular Metallica riff that kind of stands out as like kind of like that moment in time? Well, I mean, like, the I guess like the first riff I learned by them that I thought was like, that I could actually play, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. When you begin was like, uh, doesn't know like Enter Sandman or something, just like the... And then like, that was like super good. Cause I think it's like, they've got everything from like a beginner, mm -hmm. you can yeah, play yeah. it. And then you, as you get better, you can progress mm -hmm. and learn more of the songs and stuff. So that was, it's a sick riff to learn when you're like starting out yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. But it also helps like learning to palm mute and, and yes, all that yes. sort of stuff. So yeah, I think that was like, the first one I actually could play. By the way, I mean, almost every early Sabbath riff, you know. Now, I gotta say, I knew that Tony Iommi had plastic fingers because he cut the tips of his fingers off. Kids, you know this shit? You know how he did it? Cutting a bagel. It's the most common way. Be careful. Get a bagel cutter, kids. You know, you should know better, you know? Don't try to cut a bagel with a knife. You'll cut your goddamn fingers right off. You'll end up like Tony Iommi, which is probably a good thing. Very successful career. Remember that video for, uh, for, for, uh, for Paranoid, huh? I noticed Tony Iommi, he was playing it at the 12th fret. Still sounded great, right? He might have just been f***ing with us because he was like, this is a video, I can do whatever the I want just playing the tracks and shit. I mean, one riff that just, just out of nowhere is one of the most economical riffs I've ever heard. And it's so fun because it, you can, I can really hear James laughing when he came up with it. It's the... Like... <laughs> That's funny, that's funny, that's a funny riff. James Hetfield is definitely one of the best guitar players that has ever walked this earth. Even though I know sort of theoretically how to play Master Puppets, it's impossible to play downstrokes the way that he does from start to finish for seven minutes. <laughs> uh, truly uh, mind blowing. Well, it was the second riff I ever learned to play, um, which is Judas Priest. I was at a friend of mine's 
house, he was a drummer, and he had a guitar, but he had a guitar. And I remember I picked up the guitar, and he's like, you want to learn how to play Breaking the Law? And I was like, well, yeah, that would be, that would be awesome. But I, I thought it would be way too hard. I was like, oh, it seems so intimidating. So he showed it to me, and... <laughs> I, I tell you what, that was, that might be one of, outside of the first time I had sex, that might have been the best moment of my life. <laughs> Tony Iommi, you know, um, yeah, kind of laid the groundwork for every metal musician after, after Sabbath, you know. And then, like, you know, there's Zeppelin, there's ACDC, and there's Van Halen, there's all that stuff. But, yeah, there's something about Black Sabbath that really laid the groundwork you know, the blueprints for what we play today. Well, we'll just do the end of the void. This is the first one when I smoked weed for the first time, and I was with this friend of mine, and I just remember hearing him. You know, that was like, that was like the first, like, real entrance to, like, uh, heavy metal. <laughs> that that I wanted that changed my life that riff another classic riff that was a lot of fun um, you know a crazy train I think that riff is probably one of the most iconic uh, guitarist of all time. Randy Rhodes is just such a phenomenal guitarist with such an insanely original and unique sound. Uh, I think that guitar riff obviously is going to stand the test of time. What was the song that made me want to play guitar? This is a really great question because I equate it to like my superhero origin story. And I was at a friend's house, I think I was around 12 years old. I lived in the in inner city and there wasn't a lot of rock and metal in my environment. And I was at my friend's house and MTV was on. And I saw the music video for Megadeth Symphony of Destruction. And it was, and probably one of the few times in my whole life where I had a light bulb moment and all of a sudden, I don't know what that sound was. I don't know what was happening with the guitars and the vocals and the melody and the hooks or whatever, but I was immediately hooked for life. Beavis and Butthead would say, da -da -da. I remember working at a grocery store, Wise Markets, for anyone up in the uh, nor'eastern area of the United States. And there is this dude who is the night manager named Dwayne. And Dwayne was a fucking character, dude. But he introduced me to Iron Maiden. And God bless, I'm so happy he introduced me to Iron Maiden. Of all the Iron Maiden songs, you know, you have your run to the hills. And you have your number of the beasts, which are just like your, oh, you know, the first time you hear them. But the one that sticks with me the most, hands down, the trooper, that intro riff is just so fucking sick. <laughs> It's almost like you're in the fucking horse's mind and the horse is just like, let me gallop. Let me fucking gallop. There's so much tension and rising action happening in that very simple, small lick. 